Hi guys, Stormnose here, and our world around us is starting to show signs of instability. History has shown us that empires and countries rise and fall by engaging in wars with others. And that is the case today with conflicts such as Ukraine, Russia and Palestine, Israel. Since technology is evolving at such a rapid rate, war doesn't have to be carried out just physically, but also technologically, under the form of cyber warfare. Today we'll be talking about what cyber warfare is and also what techniques, tactics and procedures are usually used. A few examples of operations, the ramifications of cyber warfare and also how it impacts people across the globe. Cyber warfare refers to the use of digital techniques such as hacking, using malware and other types of cyber attacks to disrupt, damage or gain unauthorized access to computer systems, networks or information. It's essentially the use of technology to conduct warfare in the digital realm, often with the aim of gaining a strategic advantage, causing damage to an adversary's infrastructure or stealing sensitive information. Cyber warfare can target different organizations, including governments, corporations, businesses, and even individuals. It's a complex and constantly evolving field that involves both defensive measures like cybersecurity protocols and offensive measures, such as developing an advanced malware or conducting cyber attacks. Of course, cyber warfare and warfare, it's a very complex, broad and intricate subject which has been well studied. And we simply don't have time to go through all of the techniques. But here are some. Phishing, the use of online deception into tricking people to reveal sensitive information. Malware deployment, the use of viruses to gain unauthorized access to systems, steal data or disrupt operations. Denial of service or DOS attacks is flooding a website with fake traffic to make it unavailable or slow. Social engineering is breaking the human firewall into tricking and manipulating people to give you sensitive information or access to something. Disinformation campaigns. Oh, and this is a big one nowadays. Beyond technical attacks, cyber warfare can involve spreading false information or propaganda. Through social media, news outlets or online forums, to influence public opinion or undermine trust in institutions. These techniques and many others are used in the digital battlefield to form tactics towards the goal of successfully disrupting and damaging the adversary's worldview, information systems and critical infrastructure. Some of the tactics using the techniques that we just discussed are espionage. This is like being a digital spy. It's about keeping an eye on other countries just to steal their secrets. It's like watching your neighbor's house to see what time he leaves for work, but just on a much bigger scale. Sabotage. This is about messing things up for other people. Imagine if someone knew your house alarm code and they will use it to set off the alarm every night. That's what sabotage in cyber warfare is like. Attacks on the power grid. This is a little bit self-explanatory but it's like cutting the power cord of someone's house. In cyber warfare, this could mean hacking into a city's power grid and shutting it down. Economic disruption. This is about messing with a country's economy. Imagine if someone stole all the money from the bank. That would cause some problems, right? That's what economic disruption in cyber warfare is like. Surprise attacks. This is about catching the enemy off guard. It's like throwing a surprise party, but instead of fun, is a cyber attack. Do note that this is a non-exhaustive list. But to have a better understanding of how they work, let's have a look at some notorious attacks. The most notable of which is most probably the WannaCry ransomware attack of 2017. The attack came in the form of a ransomware which affected more than 300,000 computers worldwide. What is ransomware? As the name suggests, is a piece of malware that infects a computer and encrypts all the files on the computer. And the only way to get them back is to pay a ransom most probably in cryptocurrency. In addition to that, it spreads itself through the local network. All the information suggests that North Korea is the country who conducted the attack, with the most damage being done to the National Health Service in UK. Up to 70,000 devices, including computers, MRI scanners, blood store refrigerators and specialty equipment were infected with the virus. This was all done for the financial gain of Kim regime. If there is a war between two countries, of course, they will want the other countries to notice them and tell them that they are doing the right thing. And that is done through disinformation campaigns and propaganda attacks. The most obvious example is the Russia-Ukraine war, where Russia is releasing mass AI videos and memes like these ones to appeal to your sensitive nature and to think that hmm, 
maybe they are right. In the example of Israel-Palestine, you can see people supporting either Israel or Palestine on social media. With countless debates and sometimes aberrations from people that have no idea what they are talking about. And also from people who research the subject and have a well-documented opinion about that. A cyber attack targeting critical infrastructure of a country is the power grid hack of Ukraine in 2015. The attack was carried out by a Russian advanced persistent threat group as a part of the conflict that started in 2014 with the occupation of Crimean Peninsula. Hackers using the Black Energy 3 malware compromised three energy distribution companies in Ukraine and managed to cut off the electricity supply to consumers. About 230,000 people were left without electricity for a period of one to six hours. You might think that's not a lot, but in reality, substantial damage has been made. I also want to ask a very important question. Can people directly, not indirectly, die from cyber warfare? Sadly, the answer is yes. In 2019, Israel claims that they identified the Hamas hackers headquarters where the cyber attack was coming from and they ordered an airstrike on the building where 13 people died. It's believed to be the first time when a digital attack has been met with physical response in real time. War is about offense and defense, and we talked mostly about offense up to this point. Because honestly, when it comes to defense, it's just about not having vulnerabilities that can be exploited in your system. And also you as a person to try to be as less gullible as possible so people won't break your firewall. There is a contest called Locked Shields, which is a massive annual cyber defense exercise organized by NATO's CCDCE, or Cooperative Cyber Defense Center of Excellence, being held in Tallinn, the capital of Estonia. There usually are more than 1,000 participants from 30 different countries, and the game is formed from two different teams. It involves a fictional country which is vulnerable to cyber attacks to its critical infrastructure, and it's being attacked. One team is acting as the attacked country, and the others as the attackers. And the goal is to report and cooperate in defending said country. The 2022 declared winner was Finland, because of the excellence of their situation reporting and solid defense. Having all of this in mind, cyber wars can disrupt how we live our day-to-day -day lives. It can have deep ramifications in what we believe and how we perceive the world, and it can also influence the way in which the world is heading. It's just sad that there is so much misinformation and we trade fake news for attention. Now, on a more positive note, we can still hope that we as humans can come to a common agreement and evolve through healthy competition, not through war and conquest. Now, don't forget to like this video, smash the subscribe button, ding dong the notification bell, and also leave a comment down below. Wait, our two latest videos are right here. Bye!